yeah, the, uh, thanks very much for the introduction. So welcome everyone to this uh, session on uh, in-system tests for automotive uh, SOC. So um, actually I have two, uh, two title pages because I, uh, we um, crafted this uh, presentation together with uh, Siemens Engineering. So uh, Philippe uh, Rosal helped us uh, because it was the first uh, time implementation for this business line that I worked for to implement uh, Elbist. <coughs> uh, we had some specialties, of course, and that's why we requested for a consultant. And in the end, uh, uh, Philippe uh, also supported us uh, greatly. So he helped me to, uh, to construct this presentation. So uh, the agenda is um, I'm going to tell something a little bit because I have too many slides. I uh, recognized yesterday evening. <laughs> That's always engineering. Uh, we want to de uh, explain all the details. Um, so something uh, about NXP, something about the design, something about the DFT architecture and how to add the TKL based uh, also test uh, tool. In system test consideration, so uh, we use also a uh, mission mode controller from the test end for the functional part <coughs> and uh, elaborate a little bit on the ADA flow and the achieve results and conclusions. Um, the trick to speed up is that uh, all the details about Siemens tooling <laughs> will be, uh, the questions can be asked uh, in the five minutes to Philip. I, I hope this will work, uh, Philip. <laughs> okay, NXP. Uh, so we uh, spun off from uh, Philips uh, already in 2006, and uh, actually we um, acquired or merged with with Freescale in 2015, I believe it was. Uh, nowadays we are with 31,000 employees, basically in the uh, worldwide, of course. And we have some fabs uh, even still for automotive, uh, so uh, niche market, uh, uh, very old notes, let's say, <laughs> because it's re reliable. Eh? So uh, the target markets are automotive, so that's 50% of our revenue, industrial and IoT, mobile and communication infrastructure, so the 5G antennas you see in the, in the country. Um, so then I will jump uh, to the automotive market because that's why we needed the, uh, the in-system test. Uh, so we are uh, <coughs> um, having a lot of projects in the, in the series of uh, microprocessing, uh, ADAS, radar, secure access, infotainment for a long time already and uh, in vehicle networking, which started with Kalman and Lin, of course, and then uh, at a certain moment, FlexRay, and last five years, maybe seven years, we are working on the automat automotive Ethernet solutions. So that's uh, basically a two-wire Ethernet protocol for in the car. Uh, that's the way to go forward, according to uh, Audi, uh, Volkswagen, Porsche, we have uh, this presentation this morning in the keynote speaker. Something about the design. Um, so uh, basically it's a derivative of an existing chip, which is the, the main <coughs> uh, Ethernet switch in the car. It is the SJL1110 uh, SOC. And we are now, uh, this, this stage, we are um, designing uh, for a zonal architecture uh, a pointer here, over here. So this the supercomputer uh, is connected to the ma main hub indeed, and th then we here we are designing, replacing in fact the CAM and LIN uh, connected to the actuators and sensors in, in the car. And to be able to do this, we need, uh, there is a new uh, protocol for uh, slower, uh, which is good enough for the, for the brakes and, uh, and, and the, 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 the windows and whatever. Uh, so 10 base T1S is a new REEE standard. It was f um, approved in 2020. Uh, SDMII interface to connect to, to the uh, main uh, hub. XMII uh, comp comp compatibility uh, issues, uh, reasons. 
Um, and on this chip, there is uh, everything. So like uh, digital memory and analog security IP, and it includes an um, ARM uh, microcontroller. Um, size is not that big uh, compared to the Intel. <laughs> Presentation probably 600k flip-flops, still a decent amount for us to handle. And during scan test, um, 40 nanometer process, global foundries, because it's a mature node and we need this for reliability. <coughs> uh, as you can understand, um, then the next one is about the... Uh, Okay, why do we want uh, TKL BIST? That's uh, mainly, it is not because of we want to have this for DFT. Could also be, but it's not the case in this case. Uh, so this is a really a functional requirement. We need to, uh, to achieve HLB for in the car. Some components in the car have HLD even, which has have ev even higher uh, requirements. <coughs> but for HLB, it is... Uh, Fortunately, sufficient to reach uh, test coverage target of 70 percent, 70. Um, the, so the functional safety mechanism consists not only of uh, logic based, but also redundancy. So uh, functions that can, if something goes wrong uh, in application after, let's say, 10 years in your car, then it can be replaced. Uh, supply monitors and then uh, of course the FCS, the frame check sequence for Ethernet and ECC and to cover the latent faults, so that's that's the minimal requirement for LBIST is, is to cover those blocks, the FCS and the ECC, because you cannot test it in field uh, uh, otherwise. So we decided we need uh, LBIST on board and uh, well, the, the the target is is for this chip because we are still learning. It's half half of the chip size, so we we took the most important uh, Ethernet switch uh, subsystem, <coughs> which is around uh, 300k flip flops. And uh, well, you can have uh, three ways of doing the self test uh, during power on, during power off, or uh, whenever you want, based on uh, on usage, once in a while or once in a month or maybe two times a day, I don't know, but we decided to, uh, that it is sufficient to have power on self-test. <coughs> uh, so what happens? Um, you do the, the, the self-test, which is based on the scan change. Uh, also, Arthur already explained something about mission mode controller. So uh, in field, so we have to, uh, two, two milliseconds of the boot room. We have the the time, so 2% of the device boot time, um, we can do the self-test, execute it, and compare it. Uh, the signature uh, comes out of the miser and it will be uh, compared uh, on chip. Uh, if it uh, is not the same as uh, was expected, then um, the, the, this Ethernet uh, switch SOC uh, generates a kind of fault signal or trigger to the main board computer and that component is to decide based on software probably what to do with it. So probably the car won't start. <laughs> uh, so where do we come from? We have uh, generic, uh, for the, this the, uh, I mean need to say that this uh, in vehicle network bus business line um, it's already uh, using uh, the kind of default DFT architecture based on an RTL generator which generates your test access mechanism. It, uh, yeah, most of the times it's just a top controller. We can also go to a limited pin interface, um, so two or three pins, uh, JTAG, uh, for example. Uh, connected to the stop controller, there is, uh, we already had for 25 years, I believe, Andreas uh, probably knows it still, we have TCBs, which is a JTAG uh, TDR. Um, basically, it's already, uh, it's, it's already I JTAG, uh, it's similar to IJTAG, except that there is no bypass option. Um, the TCBs are, co uh, are uh, um, controlling uh, per core, 
the, the signals needed for scan tests, but also AMS tests, uh, memory tests if needed. And of course, we have test compression on top. We have uh, we have our own uh, OCC implementation called CCB. Uh, Lee uh, worked together with one guy in NXP to get uh, flows done already in 2008. Uh, test compressed times, and now we, of course, we moved to test end last year. Um, this is the, the step uh, after uh, running TKL based. So what you get is uh, RTL blocks for the emission mode control you see on the left and uh, here on the right you got another uh, an extra um <coughs> edt so on top of uh, our uh, top level edt we got the core level edt suddenly <coughs> because yeah we are not allowed to uh, to use uh, this is uh, lbis architect anymore it was uh, phase out so we now have two compressors <coughs> and yeah we decided to just to use the compressor and not optimize it or throw it away or whatever because it's simply not possible because it's inherited. Uh, it, 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 it is working together in LBIS mode. So that's the next slide. So in LBIS mode, we uh, the basically the ADT is reconfigured. So the, the decompressor will act as a pseudo-random. Uh, pattern generator, so that's on the left side. On the right side, we have the, 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 the compactor, which is reused as the miser. <coughs> uh, we have, um, uh, we, still, we still can use the EDT low power mode, which we probably uh, need to use because of IR drop. Uh, of potentially uh, IR drop, so there's also a, 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 a an extra mode for power analysis. So we have application mode nowadays and we have scan tests which need to be analyzed using VCDs and the whole uh, power analysis flow. But we also need to explicitly do it in the <coughs> in the LBIS mode just to avoid that there are surprises. <laughs> uh, okay. NCP index encoder, I will explain later on a little bit, very abstract, and then Philip can answer the questions, <laughs> hopefully. So the specialties for NXP is that we already uh, were used to having uh, our own CCB uh, implementation, uh, because we have a lot of legacy IP, uh, we decided not to change it right now, we just want to make it possible to the TKL base works together with our CSB clock control block. Um, so that's why we uh, the TKL base has a feature called third-party OCC, fortunately. So it can uh, support uh, <coughs> working together with uh, with our blocks and with the help of a consultant, of course, because you need to handcraft TCDs, ICL, and PDL files. Uh, so uh, that's it's it's already came back in the persuasion of Arthur. So IJTech comes with ECO and PDL. Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> um, something missing here. It is slide 23. You can edit uh, if you want. So it is, uh, there is a reference on sli slide 23 on the name capture procedures. Uh, you need to do something special. Uh, the the thing is that TKL based works a bit. Um, yeah, generates the patterns per clock domain. <coughs> and so you need to select which clock domain comes first and which afterwards and how uh, how many patterns you want to have for this clock domain, for example. This is also kind of manual tweaking. And we had a consultant that was very good in doing that. So uh, the, 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 the other specialty for NXP was the, uh, the top controller we already had on board. Uh, because of our uh, RTL generation tool, which is yeah basically uh, f um, which was r basically created because of uh, yeah to avoid problems in the integration phase. So it's I now we can easily g generate chip level without any uh, possible uh, errors in the integration. <coughs> So also uh, there, uh, TKL based has a solution. It can you can uh, tell the tool how it should work with our 
um, uh, own top controller, which is of course an IEEE standard. So most things are ki kind of standard. Hey, you need to explain about the instruction uh, register, the device ID, the bypass, everything that is defined in the JTAG standard. <coughs> and then there's a wake up call. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is something Philip, Philip wanted to have it in because he was thinking this is the last presentation before the lunch. <laughs> People will start becoming hungry or fall asleep. <laughs> so wake up, we are talking about top controllers still, JTAG. <coughs> uh, yeah, so based on that, we could control the TKL based. So it comes with its own IJ ne IJTAG network. Um, uh, yeah. I can. So the the the, the IJTAC network is implicitly of yeah generated together with with the uh, with the TKL bit uh, in the RTL uh, <coughs> output. And now we thought there was a problem, but it is not a big problem. Uh, we ha we already had our own. Uh, you remember the TCB, so we already had one IJTAC uh, uh, chain. Let's say. Uh, the solution is just to uh, add an uh, additional JTAG uh, instruction with its own opcode and upon uh, production test, so the ATPG, you will first load the, 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 inter the NXP internal uh, IJTAG network and then move to the, so with the test proc, proc you can do that, and then move to the uh, tickle uh, initialization using the uh, TKL based uh, IJTAG network. In system test, this slide I can skip because <laughs> Arthur was already very good in explaining it. There are two ways of doing uh, mission mode. And the test send provides two, uh, both ways in generating the RTL. So we got uh, our consultant uh, helping in this and we got some, uh, um, we had some, some workshop uh, with together with the uh, functional safety architect and at that moment it was not yet clear where the signature uh, and, the, and the test program should be stored so we had a problem uh, determining uh, where it should come from and where it go uh, went to so the indeed the, the, the DMA uh, the DMA option for the mission mode control is the most simple one of course um, but we have chosen deliberately uh, to use the CPU, uh, CPU based one so uh, then you are talking about an APB interface and I learned that the verification guys are used to APB. So for verification, this is really uh, an easy job for them. Also helps us because we, let's say we decided to to um, agree on that the DFT guys will do the, uh, the verification based on the IJTAC network. So the, J the top controller, the, the five pins, uh, interface and uh, so the functional guys will uh, use the uh, ARM uh, microprocessor and in that way they are very flexible because maybe it's also mentioned in this slide no not yet uh, with this with the CPU you can uh, at a you, c you can here it is I think uh, not yet uh, I should move back. With the CPU, you can, uh, for example, um, in application, you can switch the, uh, the the clock. The clocking you can switch. In our case, with uh, with the dividers to be used, and then you can, let's say, we are trying to get the optimal, the, the highest speed for the uh, system test, just to achieve this. Uh, target of two milliseconds, which is uh, hard to achieve, uh, because yeah, hard to achieve because it's a calculation of the scan chain length, of course, and the number of patterns to use. Uh, typically, uh, for a pseudo-random pattern generation, you need more patterns than traditional ATPG patterns. <coughs> um, so that also explains uh, this slide. Um, so the TKL base itself, it's uh, the standard flow is not that difficult. It is really straightforward. You read in RTL, and you uh, the output is also RTL, and you got a lot of files 
together with that uh, also uh, for design compiler synthesis or uh, genus uh, uh, synthesis scan assert uh, so the standard flow would be uh, yeah straightforward i would say but because of our specialties we need to a uh, lot of things to ma be manipulated um so then, uh, after uh, TKL based you uh, and synthesis, you do uh, you will need to do test point insertion. It's highly recommended. It comes back in the next slide and test and X bounding, <coughs> and then you have your LBIS ready netlist, and you can do the HBG uh, and or the LBIS fault simulation. Test point insertion. Um, like I said, it's highly recommended because you have, well, in our case, we had, uh, in our uh, use case, we calculated it's maximum 1,000 to 1,024 patterns with it as we can generate. And uh, with, it, with the test points, <coughs> it is uh, easier to, to reach the higher coverage in that case with the low pattern count. You have the OST pass test points, and maybe Philip can answer that if there's a question about it. Uh, so now there's a, there's there are even better test points than uh, let's say traditionally, uh, but uh, because we already started a while ago, um, and it, we s we simply started with the default LBIS test points, which was already fulfilling our uh, target of 70%. In fact, it was 80, 82 or something. So it was really. Uh, Safe in a safe margin. Uh, X bounding is needed because you don't want uh, you you cannot allow to uh, to get excess into the compressor. That really screws up your uh, <coughs> your signature, as you can imagine. So there will be uh, some uh, uh, scan cells. Uh, sorry, s some uh, X bounding and end gates and multiplexes uh, inserted. The name capture procedures. Well, like I said, it was you need to to specify uh, per clock domain how much uh, patterns does uh, what what the percentage of the pattern count is. Uh, you do it in that way, and uh, this is about the, the clocking. You can use uh, the dedicated test clock or the TCK or the or the free running clock. And uh, so we we have chosen for the free running clock because it uh, allows us to to uh, to find out the maximum uh, speed we can achieve without the IR drop. And of course, pets have a limited frequ frequency range, so also their maximum flexibility. Uh, the verification wise, well, I already told that we are doing it from the JTAG uh, for with the JTAG uh, interface. <laughs> Functional team will do the uh, verification based on the uh, ARM processor, and then you have the, the let's say the, the, the normal uh, uh, insistent test, and you have, uh, of course, you have diagnostics kind of patterns, and you can e even add a warmer pattern, in, in fact, uh, to wait for uh, fault stabilization, for example. Uh, production tests appear to be quite straightforward also uh, we were not used to this uh, tsdb database formats uh, until last year and now we are so we can uh, in a tsdb there will be uh, tcd views for your uh, lbis tk lbis uh, blocks that simply needs to be read in and uh, then on core level you can already do the uh, the atbg uh, that way on top level you need uh, of course the two uh, tcds for the two different uh, adts uh, scenario i have chosen is to use uh, half of the scan chains sorry scan channels uh, for the embedded uh, edt and the other half for the for the top level edt uh, embedded edt has a compression ratio of 80 at this moment 80 so 1600 uh, scan channels internally and 20 uh, scan channels externally. I'm good in time, I'm not uh, Lee. Yeah. 
<laughs> so the results, uh, the cell test is, uh, is still in range and it, it's a little bit beyond uh, this moment, 2.4, but we can, we hope we can tweak it using uh, this uh, PLL, uh, <coughs> the, this uh, increasing the clock speed. And uh, of course, uh, the functional guys or the architect had some margin. Uh <laughs> it was not really two, but it could be uh, three maybe, he said. So yeah, 2.4 is okay. LBIS coverage is beyond target, 81%, 1,024 patterns. Uh, the test points where, yeah, you can see it's, it's uh, you, you can do it without, but then you reach 72% with 1,024 pat patterns which is really on the edge. And, um, oh yeah, I did skip, but uh, the, the, so the, the, the hardware that comes together with uh, Tessent, so the TKL based, but also the mission mode will have a scan chain running through the controllers. And it's called CCM, that is uh, controller chain uh, mode. So in that mode, we can also do top-off patterns for ATBG if needed, just to explicitly uh, cover the uh, TKL-based hardware. Uh, then the conclusions. Um, well, both. Uh, yeah, it, 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 for me, it's one tool. Right? It's Tessent, but it's two products. I think uh, Lee, it's a hybrid TKL-based. And this test and mission mode, uh, we both uh, use those tools. Some uh, I learned that some customers use uh, their own mission mode controller, but we are just using uh, what Siemens tells us to use. <laughs> uh, so all functional safety requirements are met, uh, enabling AC level B. Uh, CPU is used to trigger the self-tests. Um, Mission mode controller with APB interface was used just for uh, flexibility. And the last slide is uh, about the, the, the flow usage. We had some specialties like the uh, third party OCC support, the third party top controller support. Um, yeah, we in the flow, yeah, the, the default flow, I said, was quite straightforward uh, RTL in, RTL out. But uh, let's say our design teams do not like to have uh, their uh, IPs, uh, the, the RTL of the RP, their IPs to be changed or modified. So we asked the consultant to create a wrapper. So we ha now have an, uh, a wrapper uh, instantiating the, the IP itself and the uh, TKL based instruments. <coughs> also supported by uh, TKL based. So no problem with that, and we decided not to use the uh, to to read in the entire RTL, but to simplify that because we had some complicated VHL. To simplify it, it could we could uh, also uh, read in the interface of the IP, and then you sk you skip the DSC uh, checking, but that's something you do then in uh, in the scan insertion tool. Hybrid solution was chosen chosen for legacy <coughs> um, reason, as explained. So, uh, Elvis Architects was was not an option, and we got this uh, extra EDT for free. We don't see uh, a disadvantage of the second EDT. So, simply uh, simply using it, the you can still do the flat ADBG. So, on the top level, using the two EDTs, no problem. Um, and uh, of course, I had, like I said, uh, 20 scan channels for the uh, embedded one and 20 for the top level. It's just an uh, f f approach chosen because of lack of time. Uh, whenever uh, there will be a redesign, <laughs> we'll make uh, something uh, more smart there. And uh, yeah, of course, everything that's new, it, it comes with a high cost price. So. Uh, Development costs were uh, taking some time, and uh, of course, uh, you learn from that. And uh, next iterations will be uh, smoother, of course. Then acknowledgments to Philip and Powell, so the consultant, and big thanks, uh, Philip. <coughs> wow, Thank you very much. that's unbelievable. <laughs>
Yeah.